Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. Today we're going to do a quick sketch of Kent Brockman from The Simpsons. So if we have our pencils all set, we're going to put some framework down. We'll do a head and uh, shoulders shot and uh, it's easier to like, you know, see the, so the face, because the faces are really what make the core of the Simpsons animated series. So his face is, I think, one of the, I think, a little bit on the tall side, if we count in the hair. And we will give it like that much frame. And there's the separation point. So I think eyes around here nose and maybe the mouth and lips around here so we're going to put some sketch lines down as soon as I can procure myself a pencil so here we go uh, the thing is that when, when we're trying to like get these sketches down we don't really have necessarily a starting point like some folks will of course ever have, have a particular starting point so I think that we personally I mean I have gone in different directions when putting down the face of a Simpsons character because as simple as it is it is the line and the frame that really make it accurate so his hair is like that so it it, it suggests that it is wavy in nature it is white and he has very high eyebrows as far as I remember which is why I put the eyes up here so high and just and they're also white so thick high eyebrows and he has those uh, eyes that suggest that they are like big eyes I think he has that lazy eyelid, eyelid like coin. And then it's capped off with this nose, I think that goes around here somewhere. I'm not sure if that is that round, I think it's more flat. He has those bags under the eyes, like those impressions. And then of course the famous upper lip, which is not very prominent because he is a Kent Brockman is a news host, as most of you might be familiar. Uh, most of you might be familiar with him as we sketch this. And that is the sketch of the face, pretty much. That looks like Kent Brockman. So he's a news host, so always dressed in a suit. And I believe that three awesome talents got together and brainstormed. Uh, and they arrived at this character who is the Springfield Channel 6 and I think Eye of Springfield so there's like different shows there that he is a host and co-host with and he has that standard newscaster and television host voice which really works he's always funny he chuckles at tragedy and makes light of many uh, different situations and, and again although questionable in the moral sense it is depicted in a very funny manner and also somehow reflective of the general stance that folks often take in a society so we're just outlining this. So as I was mentioning, the three awesome talents coincided to bring us this character. And Matt Groening was, uh, yes, definitely one of them. And the other two, like the tag team of writing, Joe Hogan and Wallace, Wallace Torsky. They have worked on some real like key projects 
when it comes to television. He's um, uh, Ken Brockman's uh, uh, creator. So, so Joe Kogan, he has uh, written for uh, key television projects. Uh, and we are talking about, uh, uh, let's say, uh, like comedy shows, uh, key comedy shows for um, instance, uh, Malcolm in the Middle, Everybody Loves Raymond, and uh, Wallace Wallace Tur. Uh, sorry. So and and uh, Wallace uh, Wallace Tursky also. He himself has uh, his own like portfolio in which he is uh, aside from The Simpsons. So both of them actually won awards for these. So he has been, he has worked on some key animations. For instance, the fantastic Mr. Fox, which was one of my favorite animated movies. And he also worked on one of my also other famous movies, The Dark Healing Limited. And you should really check it out if you haven't. So it's like a kind of a shout out to those two key projects. And he's done television writing duties uh, in like different uh, projects as well. And Mr. Brockman here is brilliantly voiced by Harry Shearer. And uh, Harry Shearer, uh, uh, also a prominent personality when it comes to. Uh, writing and involvement in projects whether it be acting or, or creative duties so there was this revolutionary movie I would think it was a cultural favorite it was called this is spinal tap so it, of course it featured on the band and uh, he did some awesome writing production work also acted in it I believe but uh, aside from that He's also written for like Saturday, Saturday Night Live. He's also been on it, as far as I know, but he has written for it. And his takes are brilliant, but his voice duties have won him uh, awards. Personally, I don't like judge by awards because sometimes awards duck under the talent of very deserving people but uh, he deservingly got these his his voice like ranges from the sharp educated and hefty tone of Kent Brockman to the wily and underlying tone of Mr. Burns and he handles them both very nicely So there was a little interruption there and we are uh, back. So, uh, what we, so as I was uh, mentioning that uh, he, uh, 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 Harry Shearer, and uh, he brilliantly voices uh, Ken Brockman here. And uh, as I mentioned that the range is astounding, just like uh, Hank Azaria. Hank Azaria will do a very low-toned person and suddenly move to a high-toned person without any problems at all. So similarly, Harry Shearer is able to handle Kent Brockman and then at the same time, Mr. Burns, Principal Skinner, and they all have distinct voices. Like their voices are, whether they're like low pitch, whether they're high pitch, like they're distinctive voices. So these talents, like they are deserving of awards and they are deserving of respect like they brought us a lot of entertainment through these characters like Kent Brogman again one of my favorites because that is because every time he is on there so it's so I remember this key moment I think if you google his profile you will see that that will probably show up as one of the key moments that it's, he's already earning like close to a hundred thousand or is it more a year and he on live television he wins the lottery the Springfield lottery or something and I had a 
good life hath is that he wins and he just like <laughs> leaves the air. Of course, he's excited and he has the thought that now he's loaded with money and then he realizes that he was under contract and I think that in the same episode he comes back to resume his duties and that he also specifically mentions and it's sort of again his take is always a mockery it's like a mockery of society in general it is a mockery of uh, professionalism and it is it is it is a shot just like pretty much the the show itself where it might commend some moral things and some moral characters but it usually provides a good mockery so I like a mockumentary it's a comedic mockumentary of societal elements that just do not blend and where there's a lot of funny business going on so Ken Brockman openly also states that he doesn't mind that extra hundred thousand or two hundred whatever the amount was so a hefty pay check per year so he's that kind of character who is could be emphatic but he's quite distant and in a world of his own a good reporter but biased and sometimes plain hurtful but always funny so please do check him out if you haven't and uh, we put out content every day so please do subscribe keep in touch and have yourself a wonderful day